You know, with our talk of the tape, this tough market, one where attempted rallies quickly fade, where once favored stocks continue to fall, and with no clear signs of when the situation will get any better. Let's welcome in Adam Parker. He's the CEO and founder of Trivariate Research, also a new CNBC contributor, which we're thrilled about. Welcome. It's good to have you. Thanks a lot. Um, unfortunately, Scott, you and I and tough session happened more than once this year. So uh, I guess this will be the last time this year. And then hopefully next year we'll have a, a positive synergy and not a negative one in terms yeah. of the market reaction. Sadly, we've had too many negative sessions for many to be able to take. Yeah. Um, and it goes to my first question. Right? Uh, so much for a rally to, to finish the year. We're just going to go out with a whimper rather than a bang. It looks that way. I mean, I think the 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 idea that you know, people want to sell their losers and kind of reshuffle the jack, you know, deck for the beginning of next year does make sense. I will say this, though, Scott, the overwhelming consensus from everybody I talked to in the last couple of weeks is, hey, we're going to go lower in the first half of the year, and then we'll go higher after that once we get more visibility uh, on the Fed being you know, dovish relative to where they are today. And, and so it just makes me want to think that maybe the opposite could actually happen that we could get a better than expected first few months of the year rally and then a fade later. You know, I think doing the opposite of what everyone says has been a good idea uh, for much of the last few years. Yeah, I'm looking at the stock that really sticks out like a sore thumb right now. And maybe you think I'm going to say Tesla. I'm not. I'm going to say Apple. Down 3% again today. Another new 52-week uh, low uh, for that stock. It's it's pretty ugly picture. How concerning is that to you? I think it is concerning when you look at the China exposure that these companies have, both from production uh, and, and the like. So I think one, one of the questions investors are trying to figure out for 2023 is, do I want Chinese exposure or not? Do I want, uh, if, if that is a reopening economy, does that mean I could get better cyclical performance, industrial performance, maybe demand for energy and the like? So I think it's tricky. Um, because, you know, as you know, there's a huge difference between public health and the, and the COVID virus and stocks and the COVID virus. And, um, you know, stocks have thought, you know, COVID was over for a long time, but no public health expert would say that. So my bias right. is to be a little bit more nervous about China exposure and focus on the, you know, the businesses that, that can do well without that. And I think Apple looks, you know, among the worst mega cap techs when it comes to Chinese exposure. We're going to speak to a public health expert, one of the most notable ones, by the way, in, in just a moment with Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Right. But before we get to him, how concerned are you about the kind of headlines that, that come out today, this new restriction to come to the U.S. from China, Italy having some similar issues there as well? As a, a stock guy, a market observer, how concerning is that to you? You know, one of my... You know, we've never talked about this, but I'm the chairman of the foundation board for the Gilling School of Public Health, which is the number one public school of public health. It's the University of North Carolina's School of Public Health. And their, de their dean, Nancy Massonier, was the head of the CDC's uh, response during the initial part of COVID. And Ralph Barrick, the sort of the main professor there who's an expert at coronavirus, has had access to these great people for the last several months in, in my role there. And none of them would tell you that from the public health perspective it's over. So that's a completely different concept. I think from the stock perspective, it was first work from home stocks went up a lot and then got uh, destroyed, DocuSign, Netflix, that whole co you know, complex, uh, Zoom, and then, you know, the reopening stocks worked. I, as I look into this year, I think you really want to be careful about these reopening stocks that have got started to price in uh, improvement, whether it's the airlines that worked off the bottom, some of the hotel complexes, uh, you know, c casinos, cruises, some of those stocks really were beat up in the initial part of COVID and then started to recover on an optimism for reopening. I think the estimates probably proved to be a little bit too high for those parts of the market. I actually think what, what history shows is in years where consumer discretionary stocks were as bad as they were this year, they could be the area that work a little bit better than people think counter to the actual fundamentals. So I think that'll be an interesting mm -hmm. setup as we head into the middle part of next year. Interesting. AP, do me a favor. Stick with me here. I'm going to bring in Dr. Gottlieb now, and we can react on the...